Under Mark Dalena Andersson, Sweden was hell-bent to get NATO membership. But with Ulf Kristersson, things are quite different now. The victory of Swedish right-wing parties in the most recent general elections is in itself a mandate of the Swedish people. Now that Ulf Kristersson is in charge of the country's administration, he is doing everything in his power to show the West that he rejects the Western narrative to provoke Russia. A recent example of that is here. It is not hidden from anybody that NATO or simply the US is considering locking horns with Russia over nuclear weapons. NATO is working tirelessly to position nuclear weapons as quickly as possible close to Russia. Sweden, meanwhile, has already decided to keep itself aside from all this circus. Hello and welcome to TFI Global, the foreign affairs and geopolitical analysis arms of TFI Media Group. I am your host Manu. Let's begin. According to a media report by Reuters, Sweden has denied stationing NATO's nuclear weapons on its soil. Reportedly, Sweden plans to declare nuclear weapons cannot be stationed on its territory even after the country joins the NATO military alliance. With this, Sweden has joined other Nordic nations in expressing its discontent over provocation against Russia. If one remembers, Denmark and Norway a few days ago had also denied setting up nuclear arms on their soil against Russia. Swedish Foreign Minister Tobias Billström has stressed Sweden would join Denmark and Norway in unilaterally declaring that it would not allow nuclear weapons in Sweden. He furthermore added, it is still the long-term moderate party position. We have never intended to change the conditions for the application submitted by the previous government. What happened afterwards was quite surprising. Just after Sweden's announcement, Sweden's largest nuclear reactor got sabotaged in unwanted circumstances. Firstly, Sweden's largest nuclear reactor was disconnected from the national grid after a fault in one of its turbines. Later on, Germany also started to snag Sweden's nuclear ambition. As per a report by Euractiv rejecting the plans of its Swedish subsidiary Barshebeck craft to construct a new power plant, German energy giant Uniper, which will be fully owned by a German government, has announced that it will not build any new nuclear power plants in Sweden. So German energy giant will not be constructing any new nuclear power plants in Sweden and this is undoubtedly a direct assault on Sweden's ruling government's ambition. Ulf Kistersson had reversed the previous Magdalena Andersson policy of switching entirely to renewable energy when his new administration was inaugurated in Stockholm. The government also announced the construction of more nuclear reactors. Even the state-owned energy corporation Vattenfall was ordered by the new administration to prepare for the building of additional reactors and look into the possibility of restarting old nuclear reactors like Ringel's Unit 1 and 2. But now it looks like Sweden is up the creek without a paddle. General Michael Biden, the supreme commander of the Swedish Armed Forces, has called the government not to impose any red lines in the final discussions with NATO, such as prohibitions on permanent alliance sites or nuclear weapons on Swedish land. But Ulf seems to have taken the exact opposite action, thus escalating the tensions with NATO. Without a doubt, the new moderate conservative administration seeks to strike a balance. Finland and Sweden have not yet joined NATO, given the blockade by Hungary and Turkey. NATO membership is still nowhere in sight. But it seems that Sweden's new administration has already started to lose interest in the NATO alliance as a whole. If not, why would they dispute NATO's presence in Sweden? 